All right, now we're gonna be discussing these envelopes down at the bottom right of the plugin. All right, now the first one we're gonna take a look at is actually the amplitude envelope. Okay, now that's this envelope down here at the very bottom right. And you can think about that as a volume envelope. Okay, things start silent and then they gradually rise to a max volume and then they taper off. And depending on how you set some of these parameters, uh, it might take a little bit uh, for that sound to go completely down to zero. All right, so let's talk about the various components and you're gonna see these in a lot of different envelopes uh, across multiple plugins. So be sure you're kind of familiar with some of these basic terms. All right, the first term is attack. Okay, that's this value up at the top. And that's the amount of time in milliseconds it takes to go from complete silence to your max volume. So you'll notice there was a slight ramping effect there from silence to our max volume. With pads, you kind of want there to be a slight ramp in volume, don't want it to punch along with all of your other punchy percussive elements, uh, like your kick drum, bass drum, snare drum, things like that. You might want it to sit more subtly in the background. So I'm gonna up this attack time just a tiny bit for our pad. <laughs> Our next parameter is called decay, and that's the amount of time it takes for our volume to enter its next stage, from attack to its next stage. Okay, so let's try to find the sweet spot in terms of the length of time it takes to enter that next phase. Okay, I'm just gonna set mine at 550 milliseconds. Okay, so it's not as noticeable of a decline in volume as it could be. The next phase of volume is called sustain. Okay, now that is the actual volume that our decay is working towards. So our sustain could actually be relatively high, could go all the way down to zero, so we don't have any sustain. So let's find where that needs to be. All right, so I set it so it's not going to complete silence. We're actually gonna hold on to that volume for a period of time. And then our final stage is release. And that is the amount of time it takes to go from sustain volume all the way down to zero. Okay, now this is going to really impact uh, your sound because it can provide some uh, residual sound from a note even after it is let go. So that's very important to make sure you're not bleeding in uh, to your next notes in an ugly way. All right, so you notice in the beginning my notes were clashing because of that long release time. Something that pads do often like is a longer release time, okay, because it flows a lot more nicely. It's not as punchy and it's flowing in and out with a longer attack and longer release. Now you might want a shorter attack and a shorter release for something like a lead or a percussive sound, so keep that in mind. If you want to create a percussive sound using this amplitude envelope, so let's say you're trying to create a kick drum sound or a snare drum sound, uh, then you want a very quick attack, so you can have something like uh, below one millisecond, and then you can have a very fast decay to no volume, so no release, no sustain, and you're going to get a sound like this. All right now this velocity slider that you see at the right of the amplitude envelope and the filter envelope actually, uh, these are gonna affect how velocity sensitive these envelopes are. So if you set the velocity slider all the way at zero, okay, that means your velocity has no impact on the dynamic range of this amplitude envelope. Whereas if you actually increase this all the way up to one, your velocity is gonna have much more of an impact when it comes to reaching these amplitudes. Moving on to the filter effect, we have the same parameters, attack, decay, sustain, and release. However, we're not dealing with volume over time anymore. We're dealing with the cutoff point over time. Okay, so this attack value no longer impacts uh, volume. It's going to affect how long it takes to get to our cutoff frequency. All right, now the beginning of this envelope 
is actually going to start by incorporating nothing. Okay, we're not going to hear any frequencies. And then once we reach the tip of our attack, we're actually going to reach where our cutoff is. So we're going to gradually incorporate more and more frequencies uh, moving to the right of the EQ spectrum. So at about 120 milliseconds, you can actually very audibly hear that sweeping effect. Now we have a decay down to our sustain period. Okay, so that is actually going to bring our cutoff back down a little bit. Okay, and we're going to figure out how long it needs to sit there as well. So let's find that sweet spot. All right, so I chose a relatively short decay time, and I actually brought the cutoff uh, pretty far back down. So it's sitting at a value of 0.1, which is pretty far down, not incorporating many of those higher frequencies uh, that we were at the tip of our attack time. We also have a release, okay? So this is the amount of time it takes for our filter to reduce back down to zero. Okay, so I set mine at 200 milliseconds because I didn't want those high frequencies taking too long to taper off. I did want to come back down to zero before I ramped back up again for the next note. So I had a relatively short release time, but I didn't want it to be too obvious either. So I found a good middle ground there. <laughs> 